So, here's a surprising twist that I hinted at in the first video. Alan's a Christian game. Yeah, kind of surprising twist if you ask me, considering that the developer makes no hint in the game's description or on its website that it's a Christian game. But it's one of those Christian games that don't exactly reference Jesus or God, although they do in the credits. It's like Chronicles of Narnia or the Veggie Tales or something like that. It's one of those Jesus games that's not about Jesus, but it's pretty obvious that this guy's supposed to be Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about Alum here, no. I'm talking about this character that we're about to meet called the Altruist. Yeah, seems a bit heavy-handed once you realize it's Jesus. <laughs> now, I'm not a Christian, and I've never been a Christian, and my only interest in religion is on a purely academic level. So, I don't think of myself necessarily as the audience for this game. And this Christian twist was genuinely surprising because, again, it kind of comes out of nowhere. So, with that said, and with that band-aid pulled off, let's just get back into the game, now realizing that we're dealing with a Christian allegory parallel thing i don't know what to call it but either way back into the game so alan wanders through the wilderness until he stumbles upon a vision of his wife and she's all emo in it even if you could help me i don't know that i'd care stop you're not yourself naturally the voice acting is as dramatic as being stuck in a wet paper bag i'm going to help you I've never felt so powerless in all my life. Maybe this is just who I am. Just let me go. It doesn't really matter. Esther, don't talk like that. You don't need me. Give up on me. You won't hurt anymore. No, Esther. Stop. You've just got the vague. I'll find the cure. Everything will be back to how it was. How it was? I can't remember being truly fulfilled. Oh, damn, Alan. Damn. I think she wants a divorce. Remember when we first kissed? I have a lot of nice memories with you, Alan. But I only feel an emptiness now. Maybe I just need to move on. You know, I kind of get the message of this scene right here. It's to establish that Esther's vague has really gotten all vague on her and she's super vague -y. But at the same time, as a grown-ass man and as someone who has been in relationships, I can also see this as being a sign that someone in the relationship wants to move on. They want to make a clean break. They want to find new people. And that's what I'm thinking Esther is going through right now. Maybe she doesn't have the vague at all. Maybe she's just over Alum, the monotone, needy little guy that he is and you know what that's fine that is perfectly all right that is natural and that happens to even the strongest of relationships there's nothing wrong with it alan you gotta move on it's clear esther no longer wants to be with you can you accept that can you can you be an adult here and understand that she has wants and needs that are different than yours what after all we've been through doesn't the distance between us break your heart okay so yeah that writing's a bit rough too seriously that's Best line you can come up with. Doesn't the distance between us break? Oh, Lord, let's keep rolling it. This scene's getting to me. Kiss me. I want to feel something. I guess that's Satan. Because the other guy's Jesus that we haven't met yet. But we'll, we'll talk about the depiction of Satan in this game and how offensive it is later. <laughs> no, it's one of those vague villain for being villain things. Come on. Satan wants to take Esther because you don't want people to feel love. I mean, is Satan going through a breakup? Anyway, the game fades to black and Alum starts tripping balls and hearing voices. Uh, he's waking. Esther. So let's speed this up. This goes on for a while. There we go. Now we we'll get to some plot. Listen close. Uh, I'm going to share my rushlight with you. I'm sorry, Mr. Writer of this game, but rushlight sounds so similar to fleshlight that I'm going to be thinking of a fleshlight every time you bring up a rushlight. I cannot force you to take it. Yeah, now this game has a weird sexual undertone that it may or may not have had otherwise. So you can thank me for that. You must choose to accept it with your own free will. Or it will have no effect. What's it going to do to me? If you so choose to drink it, your communication with the unfeigned altruist will begin. 
Only he can take the vig from you. Is this going to hurt me? Please, my friend. I beseech you. There is no time for suspicion. Actually, Mr. Creepy Old Guy who wants to force me to drink something strange. I think this is a time for suspicion. This is a really good time to be suspicious. When you're in a strange person's house and they're trying to make you drink something you've never heard of before. I think a little bit of caution is warranted. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, eventually you reach a point where you have to take a moral choice, I suppose. Whether or not you'll drink the rushlight or not. That's the choice. Naturally, I chose no to begin with because I ain't gonna drink some weird creepy juice that an old dude's just forcing me to drink. But no, he dies, I guess. Guess the vague kills people now? Alright, so Alum dies. But yeah, the other go around in the next life, I choose to drink. And now we get to meet Jesus. Hallelujah. Where am I? I feel so safe here. This is a heart vision. When you drank the rush light, you let me in, and synchronously came unto me. I'm picking up some weird sexual innuendo. But maybe it's just me. After all, I have a dirty mind. My messengers are rejoicing. You've come. Hmm. I don't think that's helping matters. Who are you? I am the unfeigned altruist. The very roar against injustice. Quietness to a soul. I am the words that last, the lowest person, and the final king. Admittedly, not Jesus here has a pretty awesome voice. I mean, this is the best voice acting the game has to offer. But at the same time, Mr. Jesus, that's not Jesus. That does not explain who you are. That's merely a bunch of words that are nonsense. You gotta get off that rush light and stop telling men to come on to you. I mean, let's get back to the game. I have been waiting for this moment, Alum. Why? I could not bear to watch you live your life and your death without me. That seems a little creepy and kind of super needy. You have boundless purpose and value. I have brought you out of Cosmos and sent my good friend Cemetery to find you. Cosmos City could not keep you for its own. So instead, Mr. Altruist is going to keep Alum for himself? And also... Alum seems to be pretty chill about all this. I mean, got Jesus that's not Jesus just said that Alum didn't know anything about him until this very moment. And for not knowing anything about this thing, Alum seems so cool with the situation. He's just rolling with it. I don't know, maybe that rush light removes all skepticism, all critical thinking. Because if I was in this situation, I would be asking a bunch of questions and be really creeped out that I was in a glowing thing and some really calm voice was talking to me. But that's just me. What's happening to me? The rush light you drank was the very essence of my person. For you, the vague is a thing of the past. Now only believing a lie could pull you into the experience of it. In the end, the vague's power to consume you is gone forever. What about Esther? There is hope. I love her as you love her, Alan. Now, the way he says that, it sounds like he's having an affair with Esther. But I'm sure Jesus is not Jesus didn't mean that. But still, Mr. Writer Dude, you, you may want to be a little bit more conscious about some of these words you're using. Esther is always on my heart. I want her to take the rush light and know me. I can free her from the vague. Are you going to? Like everyone, Esther will be brought to a place where she must make a choice. Love does not force itself on anyone. I must honor her decisions. She must choose to drink. That is for her to decide. So what if she doesn't? I will never have known her, and she could never be with me. This whole situation is really creeping me out. It's like Alum's in a cult now, and the leader's trying to sleep with his wife. And the vague will consume her into the grave. No! Don't let that happen, altruist. I weep strong tears when this happens. I will show her who I am, and she will make a choice. I'm kind of getting a weird sense here, too, that on top of the strange sexual innuendo, that there's some emotional manipulation happening here. Just the way this altruist guy is talking about Esther. He's like, oh, you know, I can't force myself upon her, but I, I can help her. But, you know, first, I need you to help me, you know? I'm just saying, like... 
Let's let's make a deal here, you know. I'm just saying, do you really love her? Do you really want her to be saved? Not that I can force myself upon her. No, that that'd be too easy. But instead, Alan, um, how about you just carry this bag across the border for me? Yo, know, just for your wife. Just think about her while you're going through customs. Only I know the choices people make in the very depths of their being. I and only I know. What is the vague? Why is it plaguing us? Alum, the vague was in the pit of your own heart. Every person has it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The vague is your fault. Yeah, it's in the pit of your heart. It's a defect there from birth. So again, I get back to one of the points I made in the last video. It's not a big deal. Think about it. If everyone has it, if you're born with it, if it's in the pit of your very heart, it is a part of you. It is you. You are the vague. The vague is a part of human nature. Again, how is that a big deal? Maybe it's not a pleasant part of human nature, but it doesn't seem really all that terrible. After all, all we've seen the vague so far seems very non-threatening and very normal. Esther's not into Alum anymore. We don't know why exactly. Maybe the relationship's broken. That's fine. That's normal. That's natural. But still, I don't get how is that a threat? How is the vague dangerous at all? It says you'll die with it, but you're gonna die anyway. So what's the big deal here? Am I missing something? I guess it's supposed to be an allegory for sin. Or are we gonna have a nice long academic discussion about sin and everything? But the way it's being portrayed here seems awfully heavy handed. It's an unending void that is never satisfied. Men try with great effort to fill it with everything they can. They placate the void, but it never lasts. Some do very well their entire lives, but in the end, everyone faces the grave. You see, the more and more I think about this vague threat that's all vague, even after it's been explained, it's still pretty damn vague, the less I understand it. I do not understand how this vague thing works. One moment! It's killing Alum. The next, Jesus that's not Jesus is telling us people can live full, rich lives with the vague, but they still die. So otherwise, would people not die if they didn't have the vague? Is that what he's saying? So is Alum immortal now? I, it's all very confusing to me. Why did Alum die that one point? Did he just like give up? Did he die of hypothermia? I mean, this is very confusing to me. I'm sorry, I am still super vague about the vague, and I kind of feel that it's important for us to understand what exactly this vague is if we're being told it's a terrible threat and a menace to humanity. So, kind of a big void there that needs to be filled. There, without me, the vague will keep them forever. The rush light is the only real answer to the anguish and hopelessness of the vague. Death is under my feet. And in the same way, from the moment you drank the rushlight, it is now and always will be under yours. Why would you let me drink the rushlight? I find Alan's response there to be very confusing. Is that really a realistic response at all to all this information that's just been dumped upon us? At first I'd be like, whoa, dude, am I immortal now? Two, this seems really sketchy to me. You're the only provider of the rushlight, and the rushlight cures the vague, which doesn't really sound all that sinister, but you're telling me it's a big deal. So, can you go into a little bit more details about that? And also, yeah, again, am I immortal now? Because you're making this sound like I'm going to live forever. I have decided long ago the rushlight would be free to anyone on the grounds of my love. Free to drink on those grounds and those grounds alone. Again, it seems like Alan's joined a cult or a multi-level pyramid scheme thing. It seems like the altruist is only capable of speaking in rhetoric and indirect answers because all this stuff that he's been saying since we've been tripping is nonsense, really. Altruist, thank you. You have a grand journey ahead. I will be with you. Take your rush light and arise. Oh yeah, and you actually have to click on the rush light for this scene to progress. So after that, Alan wakes up from the vision and is completely cool about the whole situation he now finds himself in. Which again, to me, seems really weird that Alan isn't at all stranged out by a talking voice in his head and driven balls like this. And he's just going to blindly listen to whatever people tell him to do. Which does seem to be kind of like a theme in this universe. Everyone seems to just blindly believe whatever people tell them. I mean, the Rogations were the same way, so... Maybe that's just how humans are around here. Maybe that's why the Vague's a threat, because it promotes critical thinking or something. Anyway, Alan goes on about the same nonsense that he needs to save his wife. 
And lo and behold, this weird cemetery guy can help us out. I've got to get back to Cosmos and share my rushlight with her. You'll never make it. The Ebots have that place on lockdown. Please, Symmetry. You don't know any secret entrances or something? The Ebots are constantly on guard. You've got to know something. I know who might be able to help. Who? The Rogations. You know the Rogations? They're the reason I'm in this mess. Or part of the reason the Vague did not consume you. Yeah. I guess so. Where can I find them? I do not know for sure. They have a base hidden somewhere in the northern mountains of the Land of Tide. Great. Take courage. I have a plan. We will make a map potion. I cannot at all get my bearings on what type of world we're living in here. There's arcade cabinets. There's steampunk. There's mildly sentient semen robots. There's Jesus, the side Jesus, and now there is magic. How the hell do we not know that this altruist guy is just not an all-powerful magician who has taken advantage of Alum? And the, the symmetry guy is not in on it? I mean, people are capable of lying. I know Alum will have you believe that people do not lie, but seriously, they, they do all the time. So I'm starting to think that there's a wizard who's indoctrinating all these people and the rogations are in on it. So I guess we're kind of like the villain unwittingly but oh wait a minute that no that that's a different game that's a game i'm making up in my head that has nothing to do with the reality of this game no instead what we're going on now is a fetch quest to find the four bits of stuff to make a potion in this admittedly very nice looking world nope no one leaves without my say and you snake certainly don't have it yeah, now we got these things, which I can't figure out. Are they just floating heads? Are they giants? If they're giants, then oh my god, how deep is this water? If they're not, it's really weird they just have big heads. But hey, it looked nice. But seriously, this whole part of the game is a giant fetch quest. It's honestly kind of ho-hum. Basically, you gotta figure out how to get outside of this tree where the magic man lives in. And the magic man, Symmetry, he won't just tell the giant dude to let you pass by. Instead, you gotta puzzle your way by him and pick up some stuff along the way. Frankly, again, it's not very exciting. It's just some simple puzzle solving. Mostly, you hit a wall. The character's like, ah, oh, no, you can't progress. And then you talk to Symmetry, and Symmetry's like, oh, here's a thing to help you progress. And that's pretty much it. Symmetry. There's a big toad outside who won't let me out. Old Gunther, his bark is worse than his bite. Him and Glide have lived here for a while now. I took them in when they were just wee pollywogs. Definitely two different personalities, but there's something to love about them both. If Gunther is giving you trouble, just play this flute for him. He hates the sound. All right. What was it we needed to make the map potion? The discernment fruit. You should be able to find it growing on the branches just outside. Hurry, there is a great darkness looming over Cosmos. Something terrible is coming. without my say and you sneak certainly don't have it now shove off so the flute now added to our inventory alum can freestyle and that scares away the floating head so yeah now we're at the spring we pick up some items yada 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 eventually we have enough stuff to make the potion yeah i'm glossing over it all because well nothing happens except well this Don't come back. Wow, what a way to go. That's one way to get a bird's feathers. Yeah, God's cool about us murdering a bird. And also, yes, you do have to throw rocks in the face of this green head thing. Hey, it's an interesting puzzle. 
And also for our trouble, we get a cutscene of what's going on with Dash Shu. You should have thought twice before coming back into my city. Get this over with. Insolent fool. All of all of Cosmos is at my beck and call. You rats will not fester and take that away from me. You're a puppet on a string. I hope you enjoy the rest of your days here. I've prepared a special cell just for you. Only the altruists can decide where I'll spend my days. Hmm. Oh well. We don't know anything about Dashu, so he could be a jerk. And also, we don't really know much about this villain or his motivations at all. He has robots, and robots are cool, but robots are also bad if Sonic the Hedgehog is to be believed. Maybe this is like a young Dr. Robotnik here. Ooh. That's a fanfic waiting to be written. Ha! Ah, that's cute. Tell it to the concrete walls. Look where he's brought you, fool. Though I fall, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the unfeigned altruist will be with me. Now, this scene, without the context of the altruist being Jesus, makes little to no sense. It just seems like Dashu's kind of a crazy person. Then where is he? I've heard enough. The time cannot come soon enough when all this fabrication is silenced for good. That shouldn't be long from now. What? Oh, you haven't heard? One of my operatives is cozying up to your precious rogations as we speak. No! The fact that Dashu is surprised about that speaks volumes. I mean, we saw in the last video how lax security was in his terrorist group. And we also saw him get captured. So why is he shocked that the powers that be are trying to take down his organization? I mean, what, what do you think they were going to do? Like, nothing? Why is this situation so surprising for him? Does he not understand that he's a terrorist? Rightly or wrongly, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. But still, why is he surprised that the powers that be are trying to take down his group? I mean, it seems like it'd be a really easy thing to do. I'm surprised it took Mr. Robotnik this long to do it. I swear, if you hurt them, take him away. My god, I have no confidence in these rogations. It seems like they're surprised their actions have any consequences. But nevertheless, our actions, as Alum, have consequences. Namely, we reached the point now where we got enough stuff to make the map. The magical map. In this techno-steampunk world that's just a mishmash of everything, isn't it? Anyway, with the map being made, we can progress on to the next part of the game, which is at the Rogation's base, and will actually be the next part of this video. So... With that said, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between, I'll see you next time. And yes, I'll have the next video out sooner rather than later. There won't be a week-long wait. I had some stuff come up, mainly involving the tooth. You can see it in Jace's video where I get really high on Vicodin and try to play Star Mate. But that won't happen this week. No, 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 no. Next part of Alum, coming out very soon. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.